All right. Welcome back. I'm Eric Kane. I'm a little late to this video. My apologies. Kind of a hectic week for me, uh, but I won't get into that. We'll just go right into this discussion of The Last of Us, Episode 5. I realize that the Episode 6 will be out in just a few days. I'll try to get to that one a little bit sooner. Um, this was the first episode of the season that really did not work for me. It's not that it was a terrible episode, but the weaknesses, I think, of adapting the video game into a TV show have sort of bubbled to the surface, at least in my opinion. Uh, there were things that worked for me, and I'll just get those right out of the way. Uh, I liked Henry and Sam. I liked how they portrayed those characters in this episode. I liked uh, I liked that they made Sam deaf. That added a little depth to his character and to the conflict and situation that everyone was in. I loved the interactions between him and Ellie. They really drove home that Ellie is still a child. She tries really hard to be tough. She tries really hard to be more grown up than she is. But she's fourteen, and I guess you know having I have a I have a daughter who's fifteen, going on sixteen, and. <laughs> You know, 14 is still a kid, uh, and it's easy to forget, you know, I guess I empathize with Joel a little bit, because it's easy to forget that there are still kids at this age, uh, that, that there's a, a lot of child left in them, because they get to this, they get to these teenage years, and they get very cynical, and very surly, and uh, dramatic, and hormonal, and all kinds of obnoxious things. I love my daughter beyond all reckoning, but she can be a pain in the ass. And Arya, if you're watching this, you know it's true. Um, she's not watching it. Uh, if I were making TikToks, maybe she'd watch those, but not YouTube. That YouTube's for old people now. Uh, anyways, I did like very much how, how this reminded us and reminded Joel that she's just a kid. Uh, and it was heartwarming and lovely to see them playing together and having fun and... Uh, and then, of course, Ellie's decision to not tell anybody when when she saw that Sam was bitten and, and her idea that her blood was medicine and all that just underscores, again, that she is just a child, has childlike ideas about the world, and ends, of course, in a horrible, tragic scene of, of just, just a terrible, terrible moment where, you know, again, this is pulled right from the game, but where... Um, Sam does turn, goes after Ellie, and Henry is forced to shoot his own brother, kill him, and then turn the gun on himself in his moment of distress and kill himself. So maybe some of this could have been avoided. I mean, Sam was a goner, but maybe Henry could have survived uh, if if Ellie had just informed the grown-ups. Maybe something else would happen. Maybe something worse would have happened. I don't know, but it's a t it's just a terrible tragedy, um, and and all of that. You know, all of that, all of the interactions between these these four people, I really did enjoy a lot. I thought the acting was great. I thought the writing was great. And then there's everything else in the episode, which I have to admit, I just pretty much liked none of it. Um, I did not care for Kathleen and her group at all. Uh, I, you know, I like Melanie Linsky, who plays Kathleen. She's one of my favorite characters in Yellow Jackets. Uh, and I think that her, that sort of, sweet motherly type like the thing that she does really well is play that kind of character like in yellow jackets it works because there's this dark underside to that 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 comes out once in a while and is kind of shocking to the viewers and to everybody around her but she's also kind of you know she knows how to get things done she's kind of no nonsense but she's also just a little off that does not translate as well into this story, partly because we don't have a whole season devoted to her character. We just have the tail end of last week's and then this week's. Um, and the problem here is that, you know, we are given this, this these bad guys. And they're not really bad guys so much as they're, you know, they were the rebels who were mistreated by Fedra when Kathleen's brother is killed off screen, of course, before any of this happens, they rise up, she leads the charge, and they overthrow Fedra, they kill the people that were working with Fedra, they kill the you know Fedra soldiers, and they essentially, and I suppose this is the thematic uh, point of all of this, they become the thing they hate, the killers, the tyrants, whatever. Sort of the theme of Bioshock Infinite, actually, where, you know, the the rebels rise up and overthrow the bad guys, but then they become bad too. 
Um, that st- that story only goes so far. I mean, like, yeah, that happens. It's very much the French Revolution, right? Robespierre um, and and the overthrow of the monarchy and the rise of you know the guillotine and just this awful period of of killing and horror. Uh, also the, you know, the Chinese and Russian revolution, similar thing, right? But we also have the American revolution. There wasn't, there wasn't, uh, the same reciprocity and, and horrible, uh, you know, uh, you know, slaughter that, that, that defined those other revolutions. So revolution itself doesn't always lead to this kind of bad shit. It does in The Last of Us, because The Last of Us is super dark, uh, depressing and cynical, um, and all of that's fine. It's fine. It's fine that we that we see this rebel group rise up and take on the mantle of the oppressor. The problem is, is that you kind of have to make a choice here. The show moves on from situation to situation very quickly. We go from one group to the next very quickly. It's sort of the antithesis of The Walking Dead's later seasons. Early on The Walking Dead, of course, they do encounter like that Vato gang, whatever. And that's a short... Uh, encounter in that show. Actually, one of my favorite parts of that of The Walking Dead is that gang. Even though they move on from them quickly, what I liked about that in The Walking Dead was that it humanized those people and it showed that they weren't just bad guys. They actually were like protecting these old people in this nursing home. And what started out as a tense encounter that almost led to violence ends up being one of the nicest moments in all of The Walking Dead. Uh, one that's very, very rarely replicated afterwards. Um, as we get into the more cartoonish villains and whatnot. Uh, here, unfortunately, uh, the problem is is that um, we get this group, they try to give them some backstory, they try to give them some character and, some, and, and make us empathize with them, but ultimately, they're disposable. They, they're all killed in the end. Kathleen's killed in the end. Somehow, our heroes get away. Honestly, here's the choice you have to make. Do we flesh out our villains and give them all this stuff for the audience, you know, all this time, all this screen time, all this stuff for the audience to chew on and then just throw them away? Or do we just have some some bad guys chasing, you know, some nameless, faceless bad guys chasing Henry and Sam, chasing jo- uh, Joel and Ellie, and then, you know, they get away and the bad guys die? I personally, if you're only going to give them basically one episode, I don't really see the point in fleshing them out. We've already spent an episode, you know, with Bill and Frank, which I really enjoyed. I thought it was really well done. And so I'm forgiving of the fact that we got those ep- those characters just for one episode. But here, it wasn't the same level of quality of writing, of character development given to Kathleen and her group as Bill and Frank got. And frankly, I'd just rather, frankly, frankly, I would just rather that we have some generic scary bad guys that don't need, char- they don't need backstory, they don't need... You know, some sympathetic leader who Henry betrayed. They could just be some bad guys that Henry and Sam are trying to get away from. Um, I, when I wrote about this, I, I mentioned, or I don't remember if it was my post or a comment. I mentioned, you know, it could be some white supremacists or something, and people got really, really defensive about that. Oh, why would you say white supremacists? No, 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 no. And it's just an idea because they're black. That maybe some some racist assholes were going after them, but it could also just be that they crossed paths with some some bad guys and like me, you know, they fuck cannibals. I don't know. Bad guys in this world of pain and suffering and limited resources. You're going to just run into bad guys. They don't need all this backstory. If you're just going to kill them off, just, just have some scary bad guys and kill them off. So this felt like a waste of time to me. Then you've got really kind of some goofy moments with Kathleen where she, she, she and this huge force of rebels, in their vehicles and everything, sort of hone in on them, right? And they're having to run away. Nobody runs to the side. This truck's coming down the road, but nobody runs to the side of the road. I don't know about you, but if a truck is bearing down on me, and I know deep down on an instinctive level that the truck can go faster than me, I'm going to run to the side and try to find cover from the truck, not just run straight down the road. I hate it when movies and shows do this. Um, but that's not the goofiness I was talking about. The goofiness is this truck, you know, Joel finally kills the driver with his sniper rifle. The truck goes off and eventually sinks into the road, right? Well, during this moment, Kathleen is monologuing 
She's monologuing to Henry about how children die all the time. She's going to kill the kids. She won't let them go because apparently she's just a fucking terrible human being. Um, even though she knows why Henry has done what he's done, which is, you know, become collaborator with Fedro to save his little brother's life. She's still going to just kill them all because she's just an awful person. Well, then the truck goes through the ground and the zombies come out of the ground. I'm sorry, the infected, whatever. I know they're not really zombies, but it's nice, useful shorthand. Uh, her monologue is interrupted just in the nick of time, sort of little deus ex machina. Uh, and the zombies come and everyone has to fight them now. So the good guys get away. But right at the last minute, Kathleen shows up again. And she monologues again. And this time the little girl clicker that was going after Ellie in the car leaps onto her and kills her. So once again, the villain's monologue is disrupted by one of the infected and the good guys get away again. Now, now this this is just bad storytelling. This is like you can't, you, maybe you can get away with doing that once, but twice in the same episode with the same character in the same situation. I don't think so. Um, Really, none of this had to be this way. If you had a group of like six or seven bad dudes hunting Henry and Sam, who Joel and Ellie cross paths with, and then they are hunting all of them, and they have to get out of town, you could have had a much more, uh, you could have just as, you know, you can make that just as scary. Just a few scary, dangerous men are just, just as, you know, you can create just as much tension and fear as with an army of like, whatever, 80 people that went after them in their trucks and cars. You can have that scaled down and still achieve the same level of fear and danger. You don't need to give these guys backstories. They can just be bad bad guys. That's fine. Uh, just because you're translating this to TV doesn't mean you need to do that. And if you go and watch the, the scene where Joel's sniping in the game, it's much, much, much more toned down than this scene in the TV show. It's, it's a lot less like over the top. Finally, I will get I get to the other part that I just didn't think worked in this episode, which is the bloater. I really didn't like the bloater. I don't really care for the bloaters in the game either. I feel like they're just the most cartoonish part of the game, like these huge, massive, like giant infected zombie things with thick skin. They're hard to kill. They're a pain in the ass. To me, it felt too video gamey in the game, and it felt too video gamey in the uh, in the show, and I, I, I don't mean to use video gaming in a, in a derogatory way. Video gaming works great in a lot of situations, and I love it. Uh, but in this particular game, which is going for a sort of more um, cinematic, narrative-driven, realistic approach to this whole scenario, uh, I just feel like the bloaters are the are the least interesting and most goofy, corny you can get. And it's, that's even more true in the show. At least in the game, you can sort of say, okay, well, this is just a harder challenge. You know, this is this is thrown in there to give me a little bit more challenge. But uh, in the show, it's like, okay, this is dumb. <laughs> this is not that kind of show. It's not that you couldn't make a show with like, you know, Left for Dead style zombies that are all different and, you know, have all these different powers and stuff. But in this show where we're really honing in on character and and drama and serious, gritty, realistic look at what this sort of cordyceps pandemic apocalypse would look like, bloaters feel really out of place. And unfortunately, the execution of the bloater felt really out of place. And I was just like rolling my eyes. So not rolling my eyes quite as hard as when Kathleen was interrupted twice during her monologuing though. Um, that's it. This one's just like middling for me. There was good point, good parts, but most of it was, it felt kind of like we just moved too quickly through, we either moved too quickly or moved too slowly. We did not find that Goldilocks just right thing, the pacing, the character development. It was just not there. And, uh, we'll see what happens with the rest of the season. We got four episodes left. Uh, thank you for watching, liking, subscribing, hitting the notification bell, leaving a comment with your uh, own opinions on this episode down below. Thank you for being patient with me. I'm sorry this video was late. Much love. Peace.